We pray today, Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be made a holy temple. Let's review where we have been on Pentecost when we heard, as we always do, about, I counted them, 15 different places hearing in their own language. Brother Joe reminded us that God finds a way to communicate the gospel. The people did not understand how it was happening, but everyone was hearing in their own language. The following Sunday, Trinity, I spoke about the relationships between the persons of the Trinity, possibly being analogous to those between continents, and how we need our triune God to help us span relationships across divides. Kay, from the sending of the Twelve, highlighted that we become attached to our temples, but Jesus sends us out of them. The harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. And before these messages, we had a retreat together, that was, Nathaniel posted over 10 hours of content that all became available in one day on soul tending. Anita Amstutz's talks, by the way, were just updated with higher quality video, well worth going back to. And many will see Anna this afternoon, June 28th at Grace, so you'll definitely want to watch her and Noah's video, Soul Tending for Youth. Nathaniel added some rather interesting, amusing um, tidbits to that, that session. A cup of cold water. We have had a lot to drink. This has been a very sudden change, and we may not have thought through all the implications of our worship in this fashion. You may drink again, and just as importantly, you may offer a drink to a friend, a neighbor, a family person. There is a lot available, and now to offer, and now if we can offer it to someone in need of a drink. Our baptism, our baptismal waters are, for the first time, all of a sudden on tap. When Joe, in, when Joe said that God will find a way to communicate the gospel, were you thinking, yes, he did? Did you think of a family member, a friend, or neighbor who might hear in their own language? You don't even have to carry a plate, as Kay's former member did, to the hospital. You copy the address in the toolbar on YouTube or Facebook and paste it, Facebook is harder, paste it into an email to someone who needs it. Alex, the Kay's former member, took breakfast served in the church outside the walls of the church to a person stuck in the hospital. If you can copy and paste, you can do the same thing right now. We have a library of cups of cold water. Sister Nadine has preached. Dean Norman Jones has preached. Kalia Metzger has preached. Kathleen White has preached. In addition to your priests, we have intimate messages, personal stories, teaching messages, plus over 10 hours from the soul tending retreat. If you give a cup of cold water. You will not lose your reward. So you have a library from your church that you can share, and the person you share it with doesn't have the stress of entering a sanctuary. They can drink at their convenience. And not only do we now have a library to share, there are hundreds of other libraries also. The National Cathedral has become my go-to on Sunday morning after our worship. 
It's a trio of musicians I highly recommend, and the preachers are fantastic. William Barber from two Sundays ago has 77,000 views. Your national cathedral, your denomination. And one of the treasures of our church right now is our presiding bishop. He can preach anyone into a different frame of not mind, if not in the conviction of Jesus Christ. Many times I have listened, the Bishop Curry just found a YouTube sermon and listened, and it doesn't take more than two to bring me back fully into the faith. His way of love interviews are a gold mine for your faith. You'll see the link below in YouTube under the service leaflet, Way of Love at the Episcopal Church. He, the first season he speak, speaks and teaches mostly himself, and the second he begins interviews, and the third is mostly interviews with other leaders from around the country and world. I think of our gospel all the time. I may not be a prophet, a holy one, but I can give a cup of cold water. We all lost use of our buildings, but we prayed, you know, in the collect to be joined together, to be made a holy temple. Shall we? Shall we build new trusses, new roofs over our faith, new ways to meet and share God? Do you want to build? Our video library, our new way of connecting, is one small example of the new thing that God is doing. Stay with me now. And it's not perfectly suited to all of us. Many of us are suffering what I found labeled caution fatigue in a little news article my brother-in-law gave me. We only have so much more patience for pandemic. That is, most of us, except, except those who have had to live with caution all their lives. Those people are saying, wake up. Haven't you known all along that we are living in crisis? I have heard several times about people who now feel free because the world is finally acknowledging crisis. The counselor said that a couple she works with has always had a dynamic. The one whose life had been chaos was always the needy one adapting to the world. The one whose life had been steady progress was the solid one. And now the roles are reversed. The one who knows chaos helps the other one cope. We need to listen to the ones who have had caution fatigue for years, for decades, for centuries. Father Joe last week told the perfect story for this moment. A beautiful girl in his class, a cheerleader, would not own a home in Joe's neighborhood because her family was black. And Joe lamented because he did not say anything, whether it accomplished anything or not, he did not say anything to his father, who quoted double the price to the girl's father. Do you think that that girl's family had caution fatigue? The trouble is that that girl, now woman, if she had children, they have caution fatigue also. Our videos, our presiding bishop videos, are a great new way to connect to God and our neighbor. All of us can use them, but I can't just be a cheerleader. Many, many, many people have been waiting for us to wake up. We're living in crisis. God has been waiting. God has wanted us to see the new thing God can do if we can wake up and let go of some stuff. Phyllis Tickle, Episcopalian and church historian, has said for years that we're living through the Christian church's 500-year rummage sale. Every 500 years, she says, the church realizes a lot of its stuff serves no purpose. It needs to go to the sale. 
Martin Luther named a lot of stuff that needed to be cleaned out of the church 500 years ago. And now Christians ourselves have been cleared out of the church building itself. Caution fatigue. The only way we'll get used to it, though, is to recognize the others who have suffered for decades and centuries, and the injustice of that. The only way for Christians to live through this time is to recognize our long history with God of exile and return, exile and return, exile and return. We are not the first people God has brought through pandemic and injustice. Pandemic and injustice are the story of our faith. And they are not two separate stories, they are one long story. And this is not to say that pandemic is exactly God's judgment on just injustice, but boy does it highlight our injustice like a fluoroscopy and lights up our sin. Twice as many blacks and almost twice as many Native Americans dying in the U.S. of coronavirus. And my, how different the pandemic looks in our country compared to others. Christians, I don't know what God has in store for us. I'm excited and I'm scared. But God works in chaos. Listen for the prophets. Bishop Curry is, and he interviews others on his Way of Love podcast. Take heart that Jesus tells us there is reward even for a cup of cold water. God builds the church. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, people who suffered fatigue. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Help us see now how you are building. Amen. Amen.